Fairview International School Bridge of Allen delivers the International Baccalaureate or IB framework of learning. It is a rigorous, globally respected and holistic delivery of learning. This allows us as a school to support our students' growth, giving them the tools they need to be the best they can be and making a meaningful impact on society. Our children are the future leaders of tomorrow. We do this through our passion and expertise, but also with a focus on transdisciplinary learning. This enables our students to have what we call breakthroughs. Breakthroughs are that moment when a student connects what they are learning in class with a real life experience. The excitement on a student's face when they grasp a concept for the first time. When students can connect with different learning experiences, they are more interested in the world around them. When a child independently begins to use and understand what I have taught them. A moment where a student suddenly knows that they know. They are able to understand, perform or feel positive about an area of their learning where they had previously found challenging. It's a discovery of oneself. The IB Learning Framework takes the traditional learning process in a different direction. It empowers the students to have a much greater say in the learning process. This develops a great sense of confidence, responsibility and independence. It is hugely powerful in enabling students to make meaningful learning connections across different subject areas. Breakthrough moments are those special moments in the learning process where students make connections. So with our year nine group, we studied street dance as part of our physical and health education learning. And we made connections with design, with visual arts, with science, and also with mathematics. It's brilliant when you see these breakthrough moments happen. I find the teaching at Fairview is really incredible as the teachers specialise the work to suit your ability and give you the extra push. At my old school I used to just sit in the back of the classroom and do my work and not put myself out there and ask any questions. But now that I've moved to Fairview I feel confident enough to go up in front of the class and explain anything. Breakthrough at Fairview. Breakthroughs happen here. Welcome to you all and good morning. My name is David Hicks and I'm the head teacher at Fairview International School, Bridge of Allen, and I'll be your host for this morning's virtual open day. On the slide in front of you now, you'll see the agenda of the morning. Our focus will be upon the school, the IB programs we offer, and particularly this morning's session upon supporting learning and personal development of our students. There'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions, which we'll answer at the end. Simply look for the question mark symbol to post any questions, and we'll get back to you upon those. So a little bit about me. I'm originally from the UK, from South Wales, but I've many years experience internationally and in leading schools who offer the IB programmes. This is now my fourth headship of an IB school, and I'm delighted to return to the UK, and particularly to a beautiful part of Scotland, to grow and develop an IB school in this region. A little bit about our school. We're one of a family of schools, and we're an international school set in the heart of Scotland. Within the group of schools, we're award winners. We've come out as an IB World School in the top 50 out of 5,000 IB schools globally, putting us in the top 1%. We've recently won awards for innovative teaching and learning. We're a school full of diversity. And through offering the IB, we'll be focusing upon global learning opportunities and global perspectives in all that we do. And specifically here at Bridge of Allen, We've been building a sense of community and our small class sizes result in personalized learning approaches to all of our students. But as mentioned, this is founded upon a very strong reputation as part of a group of schools. Our teachers, some of whom you'll meet later today and we'll see examples of their teaching, are a wonderfully committed and caring group of professionals. And I suppose me personally, my values are driven by securing that happiness 
and student well-being are a priority. I truly believe that without these foundations, you don't have a platform for achievement. And I suppose recent parent feedback has, has supported that, suggesting that students' personal development and their happiness and desire to come to school each day is a real difference from previous experiences. And where are we? Well, we're in a, a lovely Victorian spa town called Bridge of Allen. The school, as you'll have seen from the flyover video, has a woodland setting. And only this week, I've been privileged to see deer wander into the campus. And on a daily basis, we see rabbits and squirrels around. It's a lovely, lovely environment for your children. Despite that rural environment, we're very accessible. Glasgow and Edinburgh, both with international airports, are less than an hour away. And we're in a region with rich historical importance. Bannockburn, Stirling Castle, the Wallace Monument, all within a stone's throw of the school itself. So as I mentioned, we're, we're part of a global family, six schools and one outward bound center. And with this gives us a great opportunity for collaboration and partnership and to build upon the success and utilize the expertise across this network of Ivy World schools. And this brings us to our ambition. Our ambition is to become a three program IB school in the very near future. And we're well underway with our authorization for the PYP, the primary years program, and the MYP, the middle years program for our students who are currently here. We're certainly, as you've heard, already a caring and community school. And you'll hear later about the academic and personal growth of the students already with us. Really something we take pride in is that holistic development of all of our young learners. And we've chosen the International Baccalaureate. So, so why the IB? And for me, the IB is a unique curriculum because it's underpinned by a series of attributes called the IB Learner Profile. And these deliberately set out not only to develop academic success, but for student personal growth and personal development. And these attributes include features such as being balanced, being caring, being a risk taker, as well as the more traditional educational focus upon being a thinker, maybe an inquirer and becoming knowledgeable. And we know that the IB Diploma Programme is recognized as the probably the the pathway of choice to many universities, including some of the best universities in the world. And the primary years programme and the middle years programme are the best preparation for the diploma, with their focus upon inquiry, their focus upon research, transdisciplinary skills, and the fact that we don't teach in silos. We look at connections between subjects and between learning areas, and students undertake projects and research papers and essays, all setting them up successful university careers and careers beyond that. We'll now have the opportunity to see inside some of these classrooms and take a look at the student experiences and breakthroughs in a PYP and then an NYP classroom led by Miss Kate and by Miss Fiona. We're going to introduce our new unit of inquiry, okay? And I'm going to stick this up on our board, okay? This is our new central idea, okay? Our central idea is cultural heritage and family characteristics can shape one's personal identity. Today, I have a box. In my box, I've got lots of things. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the things in the box. I'm not gonna tell you anything and you guys are going to try and find out three things about me. So think about what cultural heritage we were talking about. Maybe something to do with Scotland, maybe something to do with where you're from, family characteristics. Is your family similar? Are they different? Okay, what do they have? And my and personal identity and what makes me who I am. you 
tell me about my cultural heritage, so where I'm from, my family characteristics, and what about my personal identity? What do you know about me from what you've seen in the box? I did live in Shetland, so I was born here and brought up here. I lived until I was 17 here, and then I moved to university in Edinburgh. Everybody in Shetland thinks their ancestors were Vikings. Uh, we have a big Viking celebration every year called Up Helia. Can you say it? Up Helia. We celebrate it by dressing up as Vikings. Okay, and we build a Viking uh, longship, okay, like that. They build it every year, and every year they burn it down. Throughout this unit, we're going to be looking into your cultural heritage, your family characteristics, and your personal identity, okay? And we're going to start building up a box or a scrapbook of things that is important to your family, okay, and yourself. Statement of inquiry. Um, Leah, can you read it for us, please? Culture forms a part of our identity with others and is often interdependent on time, place, and space, and cultural diversity can enrich society or lead to destructive conflict. Okay, now we have had a look at that statement of inquiry before, and we've started to pick it apart. So what did we understand about our shared identity? We talked a lot about how we identified ourselves in our own cultures. What, do, what did we discover that we shared? We have all lived internationally. Good, and that was something that was quite unusual for a group. We have all lived internationally, so we had a lot to talk about. Whilst our experiences might have been different, we could identify what it was like to live overseas. And for some of us, still living overseas. We were talking about culture, so what other things formed our culture? The type of people that we are. Behaviour, clothing, yep. Mannerisms, yep. Music, absolutely. All of these things form our shared culture, our shared identity. Tells. Did you say jo that Joey tells the story? Yes. So what do we call that technique? The narrator. The narrator, very good, yeah. <laughs> and you appreciated my terrible joke as well. Top marks. <laughs> okay, good. Right, let's have a look at the poem now. I'm gonna ask Hazel to read it for us, please. Can I and you mentioned something about the children twisted marigolds. You went sort of back the way. Explain to me why you did that. Well, it reminded me of your group of course and the story that it worked as on. Very nice analysis. Good. What is our identity? What do, what do we mean by that? What you believe in? Yeah. Yeah. So your identity is you, you as a person. What kind of persona do you have? So what do you think, out of these four here, when we talk about being principled or being a communicator, open-minded, inquirer or risk taker, how much of that applies to the way that we can shape our, ident our identity through what we're reading at the moment? This one here is principled. Act with integrity and honesty with a sense of fairness and justice. Who do you think is a person with integrity and honesty in the story? <laughs> Captain Nichols, good. this statement of inquiry that we realised that in order, when we were talking about when we were talking about all the themes that come up in this story, we we're we we're thinking about how we can be more principled, how we can how we feel about things, how we can act with more integrity. Thank you to both Miss Kate and Miss Fiona. Wonderful examples there of the experience of our students, breakthrough moments, the inquiry cycle in the PYP the international perspective we were looking at in both the PYP and the MYP, and examples there of how the learner profile underpin and connect the curriculum together. Now, one question we've been asked a lot recently, and of course, we're all excited to be moving out of online learning, but how has the school adapted to online learning uh, and the challenges therein? Well, I'm delighted and, and, and proud to say about how seamless our students and teachers made that transition, possibly through the, the students' familiarity with tech skills, with 
Um, we're a tech school. We, we make great use of iPads and other devices. Students are already familiar with using Google Classroom, posting resources there from teachers, responding to them, and our use of Zoom. But what we did find was undoubtedly there were, there were challenges. We were maintaining curriculum continuity. Every lesson followed the same structure as the timetable ordinarily would. Live lessons delivered by teachers for every lesson. But ultimately, this can be draining for both students and teachers. So we made sure we had a focus on their well-being, a deliberate focus. We had a, a mental health focus week. We introduced yoga sessions for, for students and for teachers. We recently held a digital detox day where all the activities were deliberately planned to be away from a screen for a day. We've introduced daily reading sessions where all the students and teachers drop everything and read for a, for a short period each day, just again, giving some variety. And we've had nature events, the Big Bird Watch recently, guest speakers who've come in to motivate and inspire. We've had an extended form period to make, make sure that students have some social time as well, these things that they miss during the, the day to day. And that's all part of our support for their, their personal development, in addition to their learning. Their welfare and achievement, we have a very strong and attentive pastoral care team, led by Mr. Nile, who we'll meet in a moment, but all teachers actively monitor and support. And we have a form tutor assigned to each group who meet the students as their first point of contact each morning to make sure that the students are ready for the day ahead. We support learning with a very personalized approach. You heard me mention earlier about the small class sizes and the individualization. This also is supported by student agency. Very often students choose their learning pathways and their preferences and have a significant part to play in the direction their learning takes. And their personal development is deliberately designed through giving students a voice, adapting the learning to their needs and building a community, not just a school. And our recent parent feedback has confirmed that this really is an area that they've seen significant progress within their children having come from, from other schools. A new initiative for us at Fairview Bridge of Allen is the introduction of our scholarships. And I'd now like to invite colleagues to join me. Mr. Nile, who I've just mentioned, Miss Anna, also from our academic team, and Mel from our admissions team. Hi, good morning. Welcome to the three of you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I'll talk briefly about the, the Academic Passion Scholarship. We're launching these scholarships and they can give up to 100% of the yearly tuition fees. And the, the Academic Scholarship, we're looking for students with true academic ability. But more than that, we're looking for students who have a passion for learning, hence describing it as the Academic Passion Scholarship. We're looking for students who excel, but also of their own volition, have pursued an interest in a particular area, whether it be maths, history, languages, or across the board. We really want to see that flame, that passion for learning. I wonder, Miss Anna, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the Excellence in Performing Arts Award. Yes, of course. Um, so we're building a strong kind of uh, music community at the school at the moment. Um, but for any advanced musicians who are interested in joining our school, we will be offering scholarships for both music and any of the other performing arts. Um, and within that, we'll just be looking for anyone who's taking private lessons outside of school, um, have taken any Trinity or ABRSM exams and can offer us it even um, can offer us a video as well with that just to support their application for a scholarship. Thank you Anna and Niall I wonder if you could uh, continue by giving us some details about the Sporting Excellence Award. Yes absolutely so sport physical activity and physical education is very much central to our purpose and a big part of the life of um, our school at Fairview uh, and we are really looking forward to bringing in a sporting scholarship program so we're going to have a focus initially on swimming tennis athletics and golf we're very very fortunate at the school to have a purpose-built golf hub on site and we've established a number of different connections in our local community um, where we can have our students reach out to a number of different sporting clubs 
and I can signpost a lot of parents in the right direction. So if they want to take their, their learning or their sporting endeavours to the next level, uh, very much a personalised approach to learning as we've previously highlighted. And we look to extend our students through our sporting programme, but also then within the classroom, within physical education lessons as well. Thank you both. And we can see at the bottom of the slide, um, sorry, there's details at the bottom of the slide around how to apply for the scholarships. We'll make these available to you. But Mel, I wonder if you'd like to speak a little bit about the process that parents might undertake to apply. Yes, I mean, please just reach out to me on an individual basis. We're here to facilitate and help and assist. Um, I'm hands-on with the scholarship process. Um, David is also assisting with the application process. We'll give you advice on how to steer your application process as well. So it's just really reach out to, to admissions um, and we'll guide you through, we'll guide you through everything. So. Thank you very much, Mel. Um, can I invite you to stay with me? We'll go to cameras only now and we'll have a question and answer session. Uh, there are some questions coming through already, um, <laughs> but can I just remind parents, should you wish to ask a question? to look for the, the question mark symbol uh, and pose it for us there. Okay, so one of the questions that I'd like to pose is, um, we mentioned in the slides earlier, that the school focuses upon student welfare and achievement. And I wonder, Niall, um, I wonder if you could start the ball rolling by elaborating a little more on this important connection. Yeah, so student, student welfare is an absolute top priority for, all, for us all at Fairview International School. Uh, and I'm very lucky to work with uh, my colleagues, a very, very caring and committed teaching group. And uh, I suppose in terms of student welfare, the very first steps in the morning for our students is to link up with their form tutors. So within the primary years program, this would be their regular class teacher. And they have 20 to 30 minutes each morning to complete their registration time, to ask their teacher any questions, to sort out all the logistical matters of the day. So in that early part, in that early morning registration, we sort out any little issues that have maybe carried over from the weekend or from the night before. Uh, we, I also then, as head of pastoral care, meet with Mr. David, and we discuss the individual cases on a one-to-one -one basis. So we highlight different areas where students have particularly achieved or overcome challenges. We also address any issues that have come up uh, and we set out the different actions that we'll take to support the well-being of our students. We carry this forward, carry this message forward then into our wider staff meetings where I make all the different staff members aware of all the different pastoral related news and updates that there are. Uh, and we make sure that the, all those notes are filed and every member of staff is kept updated. And then that's further supported by me reaching out to parents. And that has been a, a huge part of my role, particularly in recent weeks and months with us making the transition to online learning. It has provided a number of challenges for schools across the world, but we pride ourselves on a very, very high level of pastoral care. So reach out to parents and again, take a personalized approach, try to be very empathetic and understanding of different family circumstances and set out different action points to be the most supportive school that we possibly can be because I'd like to emphasize that the welfare of our students is our absolute top priority in everything that we do. With regards to how that I suppose maybe connects to achievement, second part of the question, um, that is uh, something that we, again we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Our teachers are very much uh, encouraged to acknowledge the progress of the students uh, and to give them praise uh, and awards in, in whatever way they see fit within their different subjects. A very, very special part of the IB is our celebration of learning. So we look at the academic year, uh, we divided it up into four quarters. At the end of each learning quarter, we have a, a celebration of learning. Uh, in recent times, this has been done digitally, just like <laughs> everything else in the world. Um, but our students are very, very capable with their digital and ICT skills, and we're able to put forward uh, very comprehensive and uh, engaging portfolios that they can showcase to their to their parents and families that show all their different learning throughout that quarter. And that's always a very a very very special day for parents, students, but also for teachers because we're looking back on all those different little moments of achievement 
for students in an individual manner uh, and celebrating in, in that way. Uh, we also have a, a sports leadership program at the school uh, and students have done particularly well in the area of performing arts that Miss Anna is heading up. We've had an amazing uh, production just before Christmas where every single student was involved. We, had, uh, we actually had two productions, one for the primary years program and a second for the middle years program. And uh, I think the productions really spoke for themselves, um, uh, brought a lot of joy to students, families and to staff just in the run up to the, to the Christmas holidays. So there's lots of different ways that we celebrate achievement uh, at Fairview. And as always, we have our pupils welfare uh, is central to our purpose in everything that we do. Uh, thank you, Niall. And um, almost a uh an unplanned but perfect segue here to um, to to a conversation with with Miss Anna. I wonder, Anna, um, could you develop that final aspect there? Uh, you know, as a musician and as a music teacher, what role do you see music and performance playing in students' welfare and student personal development, and particularly at our school? Yeah, well, music can be such an uplifting experience and support of uh, mental health as it is. And we encourage um, students to use music to kind of support any any kind of stress. We do do some yoga in our music classes as well. And we encourage children to listen to this at home. But as Mr. Nile has just mentioned, we do run productions. Um, you can find our MYP production on our YouTube page if you'd like to have a uh, look at that um, all students are involved in that and it developed quite an incredible confidence in some of our shyer students um, people were involved in narrators and also some bigger roles for students um, so yeah we support the welfare and support student personal growth in music we we also offer um, opportunities to play together and to play in ensembles and we're even managing that online through doing some virtual choirs and some dance competitions to music at home where children have been encouraged to dance with their parents or their pets. Um, some of our children have brought their cats in and dogs into the equation. Um, so yeah, we just really encourage that kind of community spirit through playing together, um, performing together, and of course, singing together when we can finally get back to a place where we can all stand together and sing together it'll be a joyous moment for me and i'm sure everybody else in the community yeah and i think um if i can wholeheartedly encourage um interested parents and students who might be watching and joining us this morning to to visit the youtube channel and, and take a look i think the um the biggest celebration for me was that every student had the chance to participate um, and to contribute and that's a wonderful Opportunity. Not everybody is a performer, but there's a role for everybody to play, and I think uh, the way that was managed was excellent. And, and back to Niall's points, I think you, you you encapsulated very well a few of the points we'd mentioned earlier in the slides, that without students' happiness and well-being, which we see every day at our school, we see them happy to come to school, we see them well cared for, without that you can't secure academic achievement, certainly not um, in the way we would like. So thank you both for your uh, for your responses there. We've got some questions coming through and I, um, I I just want to ask, there's one here back to you, Anna, I'm sorry. Um, so question coming through, does my child need a certain level of music to access the curriculum at Fairview? Okay, there is, uh, no, there's no need to have a certain level of music. We will support and encourage from whatever level a child comes in at. The luxury that we have being a private school as opposed to a state school is timing and small numbers. So I have been teaching a string program in year nine. We've started this year. Year seven is doing a keyboard program. We're starting to use keyboard skills in year three, four, five. And even in year one, we do class lessons and then we do focus groups where we're developing either on the xylophone or on the piano, some very early skills in music or, or separate singing skills. So you don't have to come in our, like with a certain level of musicianship. I will support you in class. And um, our curriculum is such that it's not predominantly focused on performance. There's a lot of areas for composition for children who have a passion for listening to different genres of music and um, for, for, for all areas of um, music. It's not just a performance based curriculum. So I hope that helps answer that question. 
No, perfect. Thank you, Anna. And there's another question here, which probably overlaps a little bit with what has been mentioned earlier, earlier but I'll come back to Niall. Um, so we heard earlier that our parents comment positively about the noticeable character and personal development within their children. So we've got a question about why, what do you think we've done differently uh, to other schools to make that happen? Well, I think that the first thing to highlight, uh, maybe for, for prospective parents who are not overly familiar with the IB programme, is that it differs in the traditional model in the way that the learning is delivered. Um, so the learning is very much seen as a partnership between student and teacher. Uh, and we see that in the very early years of the primary school. So if I was to give an example uh, from my subject, uh, when I was teaching the year two group invasion games, they were actually setting out different adjusted games to the traditional games. So we had a game of rounders and it was actually them who were bringing in additional rules. It was them who were designing the point scoring system. It was them who were deciding uh, what different teams would need to do in order to achieve. So we very much encourage the students to take responsibility for their own learning. Uh, the second thing to highlight is uh, our teaching is very much tailored towards the interests of the students also. Uh, and we really pursue uh, what each individual is interested in and we try and take that to the next level. We like to uh, build on that and look to create a depth of understanding uh, of concepts through what the child is initially interested in. Um, and, uh, you know, at, at all points of the of the learning process, the student has a very uh, it has a voice that we are very much respectful of and that we listen to very, very carefully. Um, and we also look to create a lot of different leadership opportunities for the students as well, even if they are uh, maybe a little bit uh, more reserved or shy when they come to us. We look to create opportunities in areas where they feel passionate about. So our sports leadership program, our uh, music production program. We've got students taking the lead in certain lessons. If they have uh, a particular interest, they can bring that to one of our registration times and present. Um, just the week past, we've had International Language Week where we've had uh, different students perform uh, poetry in different languages. So at all stages of our academic program, we're looking to create opportunities for students to personally develop and it is one of the most rewarding things when you see students who initially come to you being quite reserved, but then make huge progress. Um, and I hear that from, from parents as well in my meetings with them. Um, and I think it is a, a testament to the teachers that we have at the school who are so committed to each individual uh, and completely committed to their um, academic development, but also their social and emotional development as well. I think uh, and you, you, you brought a broad smile to my face as you were saying, because I think the, the feedback we're getting from parents is really testament to the uh, quality of teaching, the care of teaching, but also the, the engagement of the students, that the students are willing to, to take that step and take that risk. And I think that's something maybe they didn't do in, in previous schools. So uh, but thank you very much for that. I've got a question for you, Mel, um, uh, a more operational question, I suppose. Uh, We've got a question about transport to and from school. So will there be transport available for those that, uh, that require it? Yes, we are launching our school transportation Fairview bus um, from August 2021. Um, obviously, if this is an interest to you, please just let us know so that we can map the route out. Um, we have a planned route already, but we will facilitate whatever your requirements are. So yes, is the answer to that question. So, and so parents can contact you directly uh, and yes. we'll look at the locations. Thank yes. you, Mel. Um, and the last question we've got coming through is around extracurricular activities. We've touched on this uh, already, but if we just expand a little bit, um, and I suppose we've got the, the best people here, although every teacher contributes, but certainly sport and performance play, play a big part in this. So what extracurricular activities would be on offer in more normal times that we hope to very soon return to. So Anna, maybe if I can start with you and Niall, please contribute as you, as you would like. Yeah, we're, off, we're looking to obviously offer a choir as soon as we um, come back together and also an ensemble group of, of, of mixed ensemble because we have a mixed bunch of uh, musicians at our school and, and different instruments. But um, 
yeah, maybe not the traditional orchestra, but we welcome all different instruments to play in an ensemble together and definitely singing, potentially maybe a glee club with a combination of dance and singing coming together in that. Um, all, all kind of driven towards performances, each, each kind of half term. Yeah, just to, to build on that, um, as you would have seen from the different flyover videos, we're very, very fortunate in where the, the school is set. We very much look to uh, maximise the resources that we have when we're delivering our extracurricular programme. So Miss Marie in the kitchen has delivered a, a very, very successful and popular baking club. I was lucky enough to sample some of the treats that were created. Probably had too many of them, but that's a story for another day. Um, we have a number of different uh, sports clubs running as well. Uh, again, like I previously mentioned, we have uh, our golf club is very, very popular. We have that as part of our PE program, but also part of our extracurricular activities. Uh, we've had different uh, board games for some of the uh, younger students. We've had yoga. We've had uh, additional uh, cur curriculum related classes then as well. So those who want uh, some support with Mandarin or with visual arts, there's opportunities to explore there. And I think the, the one final point I'll make with regards to the extracurricular program is, yet again, it is very much driven by the students. Where there is a demand from the students, we as teachers always adapt and will look to pr put forward um, as many different clubs as we possibly can in line with the interests that the students show. I think that came through, didn't it, there recently with our feedback from the Student Council, some wonderfully creative ideas coming through, genuine student voice at play, uh, and us trying to facilitate what, what they demand. Thank you. Thank you both. For, or in fact, thank you both for your contributions. Mel, um, you'll be staying online uh, with us now, and I'll hand over to, to Mel, who will take us through uh, the admissions journey. Thank you both. Yeah, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, some of you have met me already virtually. Some of you haven't and maybe will do maybe later next week. But, you know, thinking about a change of schools for you as a family is difficult at the best of times. But with the added stress of restrictions imposed by COVID, it further complicates your decision making process. There's no better way to explore our school than in person, but currently that's just not possible. Um, so what we're aiming to do as an admissions team, that's myself and Elaine, who some of you have already met or been introduced to, is to give you a similar experience via our virtual meet and greet. Um, we try to portray the personality and ethos of the school. We're doing it digitally, and obviously Anna and Niall have just expressed our ethos and vision very, very articulately. It's very difficult to do digitally, to be honest with you, but we have been successful in recruiting families in the first lockdown, the second lockdown, this is the third lockdown, and we're already recruiting for 2023. We're excited. Um, we have an amazing journey ahead of us. We are anticipating the launch of our boarding, our transportation links, um, our normal visits, you would normally have met the teachers, you would normally meet Mr. Nile, Miss Anna, you'd certainly meet Mr. David. Um, the only difference now is you get to meet them virtually and probably on separate occasions. Some of you have, have already experienced that. Um, our admissions team are actively reaching out not only to new potential families, but to our existing current parents. Um, we're hosting virtual coffee mornings, virtual meet and greets, we run weekly workshops, David and I, um, supporting and trying to understand their needs at, at these difficult times and to prioritise what their objectives are and what our school's objectives are. So I think what to do next is just reach out to reach out to us, to me, to Elaine, to admissions, have a virtual chat with us. You can then certainly have a virtual chat with David and let's just take our Fairview journey from there. It, it, it's really that simple. So I will hand over now back to David, um, but please reach out to admissions. Thank you, Mel. And um, can I just re-emphasize that point that already it's been a pleasure uh, for me to meet some of our uh, prospective families. Uh, and I do encourage you, if you'd like a conversation in person, just contact me via 
the admissions team and we'll set up a meeting and see how we can not only give you more information about the school, but also about the process for some of you who might be uh, repatriating or relocating from overseas. We're here to help in whatever aspect you require. Thanks again, Mel. So in terms of what happens next, for more information, of course, you can visit our website, fairviewinternational.uk forward slash explore. As Mel has reminded us, you can contact us via the admissions email, or you can pick up the phone. And this is one of a series of open days that we'll be holding. The next one, on the 20th of March, will focus particularly on the primary years programme. There will be a general presentation covering all aspects of the school, but the question and answer session and the theme focus will be for our youngest learners on that day. Thank you very much for joining us. And I wish you well. Stay safe.